Hey everyone, this is the first uh, video of a series of videos that I'm going to do on uh, next generation sequencing data analysis. Um, I'm just going to assume that you already know what next generation sequencing is and we just go straight to the analysis part. And uh, what I want to say to that is that uh, first off, I'm not a programmer. Um, I just dabbled in bioinformatics for the past two to three years for my PhD. Um, so I'm just going to try to basically teach what I've taught myself or what I've learned in the past three years, um, which has helped me a lot uh, in my PhD and uh, data analysis. Okay, so first things first, um, the operating system on which you should work is very important. Uh, of course, you can work on pretty much every operating system out there. There's always something you can do, but in my opinion, it works, uh, some Unix distribution works best in my opinion. Uh, so I recommend to install a Linux distribution such as Ubuntu and uh, work on that. Now, if you're not familiar with Ubuntu, which, which I, I'm assuming if, if you, if you're not really into programming or bioinformatics or, or other, um, you know, things where you, where you would use uh, command line interfaces or so, you most likely used to Mac or, um, Mac or Windows. So Mac is fine as well because it's also based on Unix, but I recommend still install Ubuntu. If you don't want to install it, sort of as your native operating system uh, when you start up your computer you go into Ubuntu if you don't want to do that you can also use a virtual machine so a virtual machine is a program that you install on your computer and then onto into that program you install the new operating system and it will pretend as if it is uh, its own computer so that's the basic thing if you want to do that just go to Google and I recommend do this if you want to learn how to do sequence analysis and later on if you really really uh, if you get better then just you know buy a really good computer and install uh, some Linux distribution onto it natively all right so let's just go ahead and download um, the virtual machine so you can go VM virtual box for instance this is one of these uh, virtual machines that you can download or virtual uh, sort of machine so uh, managers you click on download and download the virtual box install it and then once you've installed it you should have uh, something like this right here i just gonna click ignore here um, you can see i've already installed um a few uh, two here ubuntu distributions when i was uh, trying to make this video so i'm just gonna restart uh, a new one you get to this um, uh, VirtualBox Manager and you can uh, click New and then you would basically say how you want to name this new computer, what type it is, so what, uh, what is this, is it a Linux distribution, is it a Mac, what is it? So you can click Linux and then click whatever you, what operate, uh, what Linux di distribution you want to install. There are so many that they, they all have their pros and cons, but for beginners I just recommend use Ubuntu. Uh, make sure you know what uh, what you want to install 64 bit or 32 and uh, once you have the name you can click next so we say we want to create one that's called Ubuntu sequencing just like the one I just deleted sequencing for these videos and click next you then allocate a memory um, to this virtual machine try to stay in the green don't go over the red just choose something that you think is fit depends on what you want to do with this virtual machine how heavy the analysis is that you're doing um, now you create a virtual hard disk now that's fine as well VDI is good too and dynamically allocate is uh, allocated as, as well for this now how much you know do you does your virtual hard disk uh, how, how big should it be depends what you want to do I can recommend go as much as you can for uh, sequencing because you will have a lot of lot of huge files when you do sequencing I'm still going to stick with just 200 gigabytes and yes even two terabytes can be not enough if you do sequence a lot of sequencing analysis but as this is just to try out you know 200 gigabytes is fine now you have this as you can see now this was added to my manager you have this new uh, Ubuntu sequencing computer and you can now power this on but right now if you power it on there's not the Ubuntu isn't really installed. You need to download the software and feed it to the machine uh, as if you would be adding a CD into, into your actual computer. So you can do this by going to Google and uh, the Ubuntu distribution is free. So you can just type in Ubuntu and uh, download it. Mm, oh man, I always click this weird other Ubuntu link and these clowns appear. It's not the correct one. <laughs> you click this one, uh, the Ubuntu.com and click uh, download. You want Ubuntu desktop distribution right here. 
and you can click download and uh, you just continue you know so here it's going to ask you for money if you want to but if you're poor you can just click not now take me to the download because i like free things and then you click this and it's going to take you to the download and what it will download for you is this image file so this file right here is sort of a virtual cd you download this if you double click this nothing's going to happen you can't really use it you need a sp special software to to use this uh, to read basically this file and the virtual box manager is such a software so you can click right click on the machine that you just made and click settings there you can go to storage and it's going to show you this empty cd thing here and here you can click on this little cd icon and choose a virtual optical disk file and i've already chosen mine the iso file is what we've downloaded but if you if it's not right here already you can click choose virtual optical disk file and then navigate to wherever you've downloaded yours there it is you click open and you oh it's already chosen now so now this set empty earlier and now you have your ubuntu distribution right here click ok and now power it on just double click or click start right here what happens now is you just pressed the on button on your virtual machine it's gonna start up as if uh, you just started up a, a normal computer with a cd inside it to install ubuntu and of course it's gonna read the cd first and you're gonna it's gonna take you to the installation process for ubuntu this is what we're gonna do now okay uh, you get to this uh, page here now you click whatever language you like just stick with English because it's nice to follow tutorials then uh, don't try Ubuntu you actually want to install Ubuntu so you click install and you download updates while installing Ubuntu I recommend it why not just do it uh, just for this to be a bit faster now oh, actually no I'll click it continue and go to erase disk and install ubuntu see this obviously it's not going to erase your disk we're talking about the virtual disk so it's not going to damage any of your files you can just click erase click continue go ahead uh, choose wherever you are i'm not in berlin by the way but I'm just going to choose it anyway uh, if you can't read it try to go a bit bigger here and click continue your name fill out everything that you need to fill out i'm just going to pause the video now and skip some of these steps now once you filled out those um uh, the, the the name and you know you made a username choose a password just uh, choose a password anyway uh, and this will be the the account for the super user this basically the administrator for this for this virtual machine that you're installing now um, there you go so it's almost finished copying files it says um, just going to come back right when it's done okay when you're done uh, I was just going to say installation complete make sure that you know do, you don't rush it that, that, that it might take some time especially if you click the update and install button in the beginning uh, that you check the, the checkbox that we checked it's going to take some time so just click restart now when it's done it's going to restart your virtual computer it says Please remove the installation medium and then press enter. Uh, you, we can do this, there's no problem. I don't actually know if we have to, but let's just go settings, storage. It's empty, it's already out. So this should be fine by just pressing enter. I actually had no idea that it would do that automatically. Remove the CD. There we go. Here's the, um, this is the name of the user I chose, sequencing, and my password, oh my god, I'm going to tell you my password. This is so dangerous, it's also sequencing. You can obviously also go full screen to feel closer. You can see it, it adjusted by itself, the, the, the screen and the resolution is great. In case the resolution is not good for you, in case it's really small, even if you go full screen, you have the small cap, uh, screen, there's one thing you can do. Uh, you can here click up here devices optical drives this is basically the same thing we did earlier by choosing an image file choose disk image and you navigate to wherever your virtual box um, where you've installed it in that folder you should find something called actually for me it's somewhere else but you should find something called 
uh, uh, VBox guest editions and you open this one and you start installing that, I just recommend, please just watch a different uh, tutorial for that. Just Google one. Um, it's just not part of this, this video and it should help you you find your resolution now the main thing we will work on now is basically this this whole operating system this is where we'll do most of the work and um, we'll use a terminal to do most of this it's already searched here um, so yeah you can up here you can search your computer for whatever you want to search it for let's say terminal and you can click this or you could also click ctrl alt t it will also open up your terminal this is the terminal and this is what you do when you do a command line interface input is you use something like this this is an, a terminal where you, you actually it i would i would describe it as the back end of your computer you see all of these things this graphical user interface these icons and you click and drag things but what actually is happening in the background a lot of code is being processed in something like this a terminal like this and this if, if you really if you know how to use this this is really really beneficial and it saves you a lot of time and so I'm just going to say a few words on what this terminal is what you can do just give you one or two examples and then we'll in the next video we'll go into much more depth so if we open up the Explorer I would say here this is the file manager basically you see all of these different folders and we are currently in home right here where you can see the desktop documents downloads music these different folders and files are in here so here you basically navigate through your computer as well right now when you open up the terminal um, on default it will be in this home folder you can check what is inside inside the location you are currently in by typing ls which will list the different folders and files on your uh, where you, wherever you are and with commands such as ls and so many different ones you can move around your computer for example cd changes the drive of wherever you are so if i want to go for example into the folder downloads i can do cd and write downloads it will now move into downloads if i type ls again this is an empty folder there's nothing inside you can check this here now if i create a folder here and say test and i type ls in here again test is going to appear if you want to change back, go back uh, one step, you can write CD and write two dots. This basically moves back. You can also move directly into a folder by writing CD and typing out what you want, where you want to go. If I want to go into downloads, and by the way, you can uh, just t press tab and, uh, sorry, so you can press, uh, yeah, download because we are, uh, download is one of the folders already where we are you can also press tab it's going to auto complete basically what you have there press downloads and then let's say we want to directly go into the next folder that we've created test and now you press enter it's going to directly go in there you would have to go twice back now if you want to go back where you were is which is home so now in the next video we'll talk a little bit more about the terminal and uh, see how we can use it with sequencing data. We'll start right away with sequencing data. I don't want to do a lot of introduction on what this is. I think that you'll just, while we type all of these commands, you'll slowly get it. I don't want to make a tutorial on just uh, these are all the commands you can use. But instead, we'll use it on actual data and then you'll slowly, slowly catch on. Just always try to do exactly what we're doing here. Um, try to do it on your computer as well because the best way you learn this is by just typing it and then you'll make a mistake and you'll be really angry because everything you do something's missing and whatever it was it was missing was just like a dot or some capital letter that you missed or see because if I change if I go change drive and go downloads right download small it's gonna say nope there's no no such directory because it's it's uh, you know capital sensitive all right so until the next video and uh, you can also check out more of these videos and uh, posts on next generation sequencing hq.com where we'll also if it's not already up there now by now there's going to be a course on how to write a script basically program something that will automate your bioinformatical pipeline your whole analysis for you something that would take you you know months if you would do it by hand by i don't know opening excel spreadsheets and moving around your sequences this is how you would do it uh, when you automate it that's a course that i'm going to offer there so next generation sequencing hq.com